could you click on this video because you would like to find out how to become a software engineer or you are just curious. I guess you're wondering, who am I? Why do I have the credentials to talk on this topic? Uh, I mean, imposter syndrome says I don't have the credentials to talk about this, but I thought it would make an interesting, good, useful video concept for my channel. So we are here. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Steph. I am a <clears throat> junior <laughs> software engineer. I've been in this role for two years. So hopefully getting rid of the junior <clears throat> soon. And I guess I sometimes make like day in the life of a software engineer style vlogs. And now I do talking head videos. Do you get it? Cause talking head in the camera. All right. So this video is going to come into three parts. Part one, I'm going to talk about how I became a software engineer to so just go over my own, you know, personal programming journey. Part two will be how other people become software engineers because there's a few different pathways you could take. My route is not necessarily the only option. And part three will be how you can become a software engineer. So how I became a software engineer, to be honest, it's not a career I necessarily had my sights set on. I always kept changing my mind about what I wanted to do. I decided I wanted to, to be a doctor, actually a psychiatrist. I thought that would be cool. Let's ignore the fact that it'd be like 10 years of education to get there. As much of a nerd as I am, I did not get into medicine. I did though do a semester and a half of biomedical science. What I've learned about biology related subjects is it's all just memorization. Memorizing all the different parts of the brain, memorizing all the different bones in the body and the skeletal system and all these different systems. And I just, I don't like memorizing things like that. It is so boring for me. And I had to change and do something else. And so it got me reflecting on what do I actually enjoy and want to study because I went into biomed with my sights set on becoming like a psychiatrist. However, I did not really think about the fact that I don't really like biology. So how am I going to sit through like 10 years of like biology to then get into that role? I don't think it's really worth it. So that next year I transferred unis, I transferred degrees, and I started doing a Bachelor of IT, Information Technology, with a major in Computer Science. And as I said before, I didn't really have my sights set on a particular career, like becoming a software engineer. It was more just I had this epiphany that I would like to learn how to code. And I thought that would be fun. I had dabbled with coding a little bit back in the day when I was a wee little 14 year old girl obsessed with Tumblr. And I learned that you can change how your Tumblr page looks by clicking the little edit HTML button and just modifying things. And I went down rabbit holes of Googling like how to change the number of columns in HTML, how to change the background, how to change the blah, 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 blah. And I would just read documentation and then just update the code and then I'd watch it have an effect and change how my page looked and that was just so fun and satisfying to me. So I thought, hey, why not learn more coding beyond just some basic HTML things? So surprise, surprise, I studied computer science like every other software engineer. I also ended up doing a double degree. Uh, as I said, bit of a nerd here, likes math. I transferred to the double degree and also did a Bachelor of Maths. And for anyone wondering, my major in the math degree was Applied Computational Mathematics, which is a mouthful. Essentially, it's a lot of like calculus and algebra and mathematical modeling programmatically. So we did a lot of MATLAB work. For any engineers out there who uh, love their MATLAB, MATLAB expert over here, or at least I was at uni, I haven't touched it since I've been in the workforce. And on the summer holidays between my second and third year, I had my first internship. I found out about this internship through my university. So the company must have, I don't know, talked to someone at uni and they advertised it to everyone in my cohort. So I went ahead and applied and luckily found myself uh, getting in. I will note though that this was not actually a software engineering internship and it was not a tech company for what that's worth. The company is predominantly engineers and in my cohort of interns that year, I think there was like maybe 25 of us and maybe 20 of them were all engineering students. And then I was the one weirdo doing IT and math. And then there was like three law students or something. It was a weird mix. I ended up getting placed in a research team that actually had some mathematicians on it. So I suppose maybe I got selected more so for my math, the math side of things rather than the IT computer science side of things. But the work I ended up doing on that internship was a lot of MATLAB. <laughs> they were kind of a research team that were doing some mathematical modeling and had all these different algorithms. It wasn't really a, a software engineering internship, but there was programming involved. And I did also get to do a little bit of programming in 
C or C++. I can't remember. One of those two. It was a good internship and it was definitely a good experience. And even though my job title wasn't like software engineering intern, I think there was still value having that on my resume because I would still talk about the fact that I did some programming in C or C++, whatever it was, and programming in MATLAB. And I think on my resumes, I just wrote intern. I didn't explain what type of intern I was. So keep it vague, emphasize the relevant aspects of, you know, whatever it was you did. The next summer I transferred internally. So I had been talking to my boss at that internship about, you know, expressing interest and wanting to do more programming and software engineering type things. And there was another team, they were a subsidiary of the original company I was working at and they were looking for a software engineer. I got sent off the next summer to work with this other team as a software engineering intern. Ah, yay! And I got to actually do more software engineering things. And at that internship, I was working with .NET Core, I think. I got to do a fair bit of like parallel computing, which I'd never done before. The lead software engineer guy that I was working with, he taught me a bit about uh, async await type of patterns and logic and what they mean and I was parallelizing things and it was very cool and that was it for internships never had an internship at a tech company but I mean I personally don't think it's the end of the world if you if you manage to secure an internship at a non-tech company that's still a perfectly amazing experience to have on your resume the company I had my internships at is quite a big company in the aerospace industry. It still looked good on the resume just because people knew of that company. It's still a well-known name. And then final year of uni rolls around. I applied to various graduate programs, software engineering roles, and I end up securing a graduate role. Again, not a tech company, but I wasn't really upset about it. This graduate role I got, I learned the hard way that a technology graduate isn't the same thing as like an entry-level software engineer position. Technology graduate or IT graduate, very vague. I don't know why I had it in me that I was gonna to get to do programming. I think maybe on the like job graduate program listing on their company's website where they you know write dot points, it must have mentioned something about programming, but that would have been amongst many other dot points of like things you could possibly work on, you know? So I start at this company and I get placed on a team that doesn't have any programmers and I was sad. The start of my grad program was a bit funky. The team I got placed on, my manager, she started the day after I started. So the previous manager of that team got fired. I'm not really sure of the full story, but it was a bit of a mess. And so this lady had just joined on a team where the previous person got fired, something to do with the way the project was going. Then she gets told she has a grad now. Basically, she was not prepared and they didn't really have much work for me and for, <laughs> for a few months. When I found out internally that they were advertising over in some other team, uh, someone was hiring a full-time junior software engineer. Oh boy, did I get excited. Uh, because I was reading the job description for this role and I was like, this is exactly what I thought I would be doing in this role. That like, it was very specific, like, uh, we'll develop unit tests and and debug code and blah 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 and use uh, Azure cloud technologies and I was like reading all this like oh that's the kind of role I wanted and it's a junior it's entry level so I had a chat with my manager about the fact that there was a role over there that was pretty much aligned with all of my interests and what what I wanted to be doing and she was all supportive for me to go apply internally for it I mean she knew I wanted to do programming stuff so I think she was probably pretty happy for me to, if, if I could get that role, she was very supportive of it. Maybe a month or two after I applied, I got an interview. Then a week later, got a phone call that I secured the role. And that is the role I am still in today. Recently, the past year, I've been working a lot with Python. I've just started um, dabbling in our front end as well, so doing some React. I've done a ton of SQL stuff as well. I've learned all about databases and data warehouses and all these data things. It has been a lot of fun and I've been really enjoying it and I get to work from home a lot. I've been going into the office like one, sometimes two days a week. And I am honestly very, very grateful to be in this position. So that is how I became a software engineer. Now part two, how other people become software engineers. Now, bit disclaimer, obviously I can only really talk about my own experience. There's only so much I can say before I'm just talking out of my ass about all the different types of other pathways for how you can become a software engineer. So I'm gonna just touch on it a little bit, somewhat anecdotally, just about what I know, 
but if you are curious about any of these pathways please just go ahead and do your own research especially you know it might be different depending on what area you're in as well in summary let's go over all the different pathways the most common and what i did i guess is having the computer science degree into some kind of internship into software engineering role. I suppose that would be the most common ideal pathway. Understandably, not everyone has the opportunity to be able to go and get a computer science degree, I'm aware, but I suppose that would be the most ideal pathway. Option number two, and something that I've actually seen quite a lot in the workforce when I ask people what their background is, is some kind of other STEM degree, not computer science, into working in that field and then transitioning into some kind of software engineering role later. And I think this is quite common for say engineers is that maybe there's some overlap in the kind of skills engineers have and computer scientists or even mathematicians and physicists, a lot of these technical STEM type of roles, some of them, you know, in going forward into the future, they're all gonna use some type of programming to some extent. Everything is gonna get modeled in different ways. People writing scripts, Python scripts, who knows? So there's a lot of people who start off, say, in engineering and work as an engineer, and then they end up transitioning. Maybe in their engineering role, they got to work with MATLAB or Python or do some kind of programming. And then they see an opportunity to kind of transition laterally and hone in on those skills. You know, you might not have the most formal computer science background, but you can definitely still end up as a software engineer. One of the full stack developers who I used to work with, she actually came from a mechanical engineering background. So the world is your oyster. Don't be disheartened if you have some other STEM degree and not a computer science degree, it's still possible to get there, trust me. It just might take a bit longer and a bit more time to teach yourself some of the skills that you're lacking from not doing a specifically computer science degree. So we have comp sci degree, unrelated, you know, other type of STEM degree. And other than that, the next option probably is boot camps. I personally actually haven't met anyone who's done a boot camp, so I can't really talk about this too much, but I've seen a lot of videos online of people talking about boot camps and how it's a way to kind of fast track your learning and learn as much as you can in a span of weeks or months, pretty much put you in a position where you're now hireable as a dev. I've heard that there's some boot camps out there that can even guarantee you a job at the end of it or some that cost money, but they don't expect you to pay for it until you then get a job with a salary and then you can pay for it with your salary. So if you're low on money, that could be an option. But again, it's one of those things that you'll have to research about what's in your area. But the boot camp into software engineer is definitely a possible pathway out there. And then the last option is being self-taught. And look, I'm pretty sure everyone would agree that having some kind of formal education on your resume definitely would help you get your foot in the door in terms of getting interviews but it is not impossible to become a software engineer just purely being self-taught. I have someone that I work with who never went to uni and he's a genius. He just finished high school and just somehow got into some kind of tech job. It wasn't software engineering. It would have been, I think, maybe systems or networking, but infrastructure or something. But regardless, he got into the tech industry straight out of school. And then over the years, he's just been learning, teaching himself everything, reading all kinds of documentation. And he's been working a lot in the DevOps and engineering space the past few years. And he's one of the smartest people I know. So self-taught is definitely possible. If you're someone who is really good at teaching yourself and reading documentation and just learning what you need to know to get the job done, it's just about getting your foot in the door in the tech industry. And then in no time, you'll be able to get there. Maybe, I hope. Alrighty, so part three, how you can become a software engineer. So for this section, I actually drew a diagram. <laughs> This is kind of silly, but ultimately I, I'm, I don't know what you call this. Ah, but I call this the three requirements to become a software engineer. <laughs> we have experience, education, soft skills. Ultimately, I made this up, so don't take my word for gospel, but in my mind, there's three key elements to becoming a software engineer or three main things that you need one is some kind of education, be it a formal university or boot camp or informal self-taught. One is experience, whether that is actual just proper internships or informal tech-related industry experience, or even just exposure, shadowing people, networking on LinkedIn, whatever you can, you know, get. And number three, soft skills. I guess that's a big one because a lot of people in the tech world are maybe the not the most sociable, a bit more on the nerdy side, <laughs> but soft skills can definitely help you stand out. It's having those good communication, good teamwork. It's being someone people actually 
like working with and enjoying working with and that kind of thing can stand out in an interview. People want to hire people that's going to get along with the rest of the team so it's good to have good soft skills. Those are the three key elements and then the next part is actually getting the job. So fluffing out your resume and preparing for interview. My main tip for resume is just seek advice. When I was putting my resume together for applying to graduate roles, I scoured the internet for examples of software engineering resumes. Uh, there's a subreddit, r slash resumes, I think is what it's called. And I think I searched software engineer on there and I found a ton of people's example resumes of them looking for software engineering jobs. And I'd read all the comments of people criticizing their resumes and I would just make note of the different common things that people were commenting on and, and giving advice on. And I'll just take all that into account when I put together my own resume. And I got quite a lot of uh, responses from when I started applying to things. So I'd like to think my resume was quite well done. And I also had a cover letter too. Another thing is when I would apply to different places, I might tweak the cover letter a bit each time. So I think it is, it does take a lot more effort but it's good to have a bit of more personalized applications for different jobs. At least in my opinion, I guess some people end up having to apply to 100 plus jobs. And in that case, maybe you don't want to be spending 15 minutes tweaking your resume every single time for every single job. I, I get it. Take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt, you know, pick and choose. You don't have to follow all of the advice. And then the next step is interviews. I guess there's two aspects of this. There's just general interviewing tips. I'm sure you can find lots of stuff online about the STAR concept, which I forget what it stands for, but I can put it on the screen, <laughs> something like that. And just general like behavioral interview tips. But then I guess more specifically is preparing for technical interviews like coding interviews. You may have heard the word leak code, data structures and algorithms. A lot of companies, especially tech companies, so if you really have your site set on Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all these companies, you're going to have to practice leak code style programming questions and you'll have to practice them a lot. Uh, I will expose myself. I actually failed most of the coding tests that I did when I was looking for jobs. The job I ended up getting did not give me a coding test, so. Honestly, I just wasn't very prepared. I don't think I really anticipated how much I should be practicing leak code. It just didn't cross my mind <laughs> when I was applying for things. I clearly did not uh, watch this video, so. I guess the lesson learned here is if you know that leak code and things like that is a bit of a weakness of yours, you might have better luck getting a job at a non-tech company. But most tech companies definitely will be doing questions like that. And you know, if you're prepared for the interview, you'll pass the interview and then you'll get a job offer. And now you are officially a certified software engineer yourself. Do you feel prepared? And other than that, I suppose that's everything you need to know for how to become a software engineer. Any other things I've missed or questions you have, honestly, Google is your best friend. Good luck, my fellow uh, soon-to-be software engineers. Thank you for watching this video. I am AFK Steph. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more Talking Head style content or if you want to see more vlogs or who knows what the next video is going to be, it I don't even know. So we'll find out. Bye!